How I see it, the fastest way that we can restore this beautiful garden planet that we have and the health of our global family is to reinstate what was lost during the age of empires, the last 2000 year astrological age of Pisces, where we have you know the two fish and polarization. Ironically, the fish is the ancient symbol of the mystic. So the end game of this age is to listen to the mystics who assist people through times of transition. And it's ironic really that we have all these franchise films of superheroes telling us the way we're going to save the world is with brute force and guns and it's the opposite. It's the witches, which is a word loaded with taboo. The women who had their wits about them, the wise women. and. Specifically, it's reinstating those social structures that support people to repair um, our society. And I'll, I'll give specific examples. Two things. So, people crave connection. Statistics show that the fastest way to remedy addiction, which is just the inner child and the inner teenager desperately seeking comfort to fill the void, is connection and not just you know superficial connection on devices but soul connection because the way we heal the soul is through validating our internal truth and our internal experience we traumatize the soul when we invalidate that the, the structure of sitting in a circle which was common to all indigenous peoples no matter where our ancestors hail from is how we learn to share power. Passing a talking stick around so that each person's voice is valued and honoured. If we don't have this anchored as a structure for our social interactions, what happens is we unconsciously form a pyramid of power where the dominant ego, the person who is the loudest, has the most power. And people arrange themselves into pleasing and appeasing the dominant ego. And this is how we end up with tyrants at the helm. The people that are most disempowered seek external power compulsively to compensate for their lack of inner power. So I've been training people up, women in 44 countries now since 2013, to facilitate sharing circles so people have a place to be heard, to be seen, to be supported once a month during the moon's lowest ebb when women are most at risk of self-harm, you know, bad choices, just being in a spiral. For men, that's midwinter because men are ruled by the sun whereas women are ruled by the moon in terms of our, you know, our biorhythm. So the holy grail was a rite of passage facilitated by women that supported men through their annual dark night of the soul. My prayer is to be given the resources um, to be able to train as many facilitators as quickly as possible to reinstate circles that align with the cycles of the sun and the moon so that we can live in a state of union with the cycles that govern and initiate our psyche, as well as initiating or teaching facilitators to initiate men and women, not just into what it is to be a man or a woman, but through our four life stages, so that we can grow in our, into our potential gracefully and be a living legacy to future generations. Yeah. My dream is to create a retreat center where people can come and experience what it is to live in alignment with the cycles, but also to have 
pods where young people are supported to have a nine month gestation okay. period to I'll, 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 take I'll, I'll, that I'll, I'll inner descent this. journey, the heroine's journey, to face their shadow, to face their fears, their, their insecurities in a supported way, where they have access to elders, rather than kids using drugs or virtual realities to tune out because their reality is so traumatizing that um, they're screaming for help. You know, when we look at the escalating rates of anxiety and depression and suicide, particularly in our youth. So, yeah, if anyone is listening to this and feels a call to partner with me in any way, shape or form, I would love any opportunity to speak at summits, at festivals, um, to facilitate. Um, I'm... I have no plans right now. I'm completely at the mercy of whatever great mystery is going to bestow upon me as a vehicle to dispel this. But I, I know that I have um, something of great value. Um, if people want to know more about what it is I'm speaking about, two books, I've written six books, but the two that I would recommend as a starting point, my last book, The Grail, which maps the ancient mystic tradition of um, the grail, which teaches people how to live in alignment with the cycles to create personal sustainability and sustainable relationships and sustainable communities. Because we can't make our planet sustainable if we can't sustain ourselves. If we can't keep a pot plant alive, we can't save the Amazon or any, we can't be effective parents. So that, and also the book Goddess Wisdom Made Easy, which was published by Hay House, and it's been translated into Chinese, French, Slovenian and Turkish, and it's in English. Um, that introduces people to the ancient wisdom of the feminine. So I thought it was so synchronistic when I got here that the tagline for this year's Fringe is rituals that unite us, because you know, I said to the, the Fringe, there's no category for my show, it's Ritual Theatre. And Ritual Theatre was the origins <laughs> of theatre as we know it today, the mystery plays. Yeah. So, yes, the role of art is essential. You know, patriarchy values sport more than art. Sport, we come together to compete. It's the expression of the ego. It's about dominance, yeah. superiority. Art is the language of the soul. And, yep. you know, I loved in Ireland, they didn't tax artists for um, quite some time. I don't know if that's still the case because they recognized art fulfilled such an essential uh, role in the health of the collective psyche. So we need a lot more funding, a lot more appreciation of those that are here to create theater, to create visual art, music. I mean, the fastest way to change our state is through vibration, is through music that elevates us, that, you know, speaks to our soul. So art is essential in our healing process right now. And ritual theatre, you know, in the ancient world, the priests and the priestesses were the actors. And they would wear mask you know mask is powerful the shaman's mask so much so that when you put a mask on you have to do so not facing the audience and then turn around in silence so that they get the opportunity to feel the presence that is coming through you're channeling mm -hmm. so the ancient mystery plays people would receive they would imbibe a substance which helped to open the pineal gland to alter their state not in a way that was so discombobulating like ayahuasca you know where people are on such a trip that they don't have the opportunity to integrate what they're experiencing in the now but something you know like blue lotus the euphoric uh, the drink in ancient greece was called kaikion and it was made from barley, fermented, 
but just something which kind of softens the edges so that when the mystery plays, the ancient myths were reenacted, which map our heroic journeys, yeah, of the archetypes within us. The gods and the goddesses would inhabit the players and people would receive direct transmissions, insights that they need into the struggles that they are personally navigating in their lives. So it's not, you know, just about entertainment, it's therapy. Mm. The sponsors to my show have been mystic women. And what that's shown me is I still need to tweak it to make it more accessible to mainstream. That was my goal. Yeah. So, you know, coming into this, I, I wanted to create a vehicle where I could, you know, get this to a streaming platform because that's where everybody is, you know, they're watching Netflix. So I wanted to uh, create a, a vehicle that was accessible to bring ancient women's wisdom to the masses through the sugar pill of, of entertainment. I would love the opportunity to present this at arts festivals or, you know, spiritual festivals, um, really anywhere that will have me. Um, I think it would work well as uh, a film and television medium, you know, um, particularly because it's half animation. But, yeah, I, I would love to take it on the road. I think it would be, uh, you know, gosh, I'd even love... To, to roll into a town or do a tour where we we present it during the vortices of nature, such as the equinoxes and the solstices at pivotal points on the Earth Mother's grid, mm -hmm. places where the dragon lines cross in a pop-up tent, you know, like an evangelical um, tent city, where pe during the day people can come and experience mystic practices you know like yeah. breath work or ecstatic dance yeah. or you know wow. exactly and then yeah. in the evening attend the mystery play because mysticism is all about the experience connecting directly with the force mm. yeah with the life force through ecstatic practices and that that was the role of the feminine my understanding is that sufism was kind of turned into the state of Islam mm -hmm. and those practices and the Kabbalah was turned into Judaism and the Grail was turned into Christianity. And these were then vehicles for indoctrinating the masses into an ideology that served those in power. Mm -hmm. But when we just watch rituals done by clergy, it doesn't have the same power as when we're an an active participant and we're engaged directly with the energies yeah